In this part, we'll be taking a look at the redshift lens distortion shader. So because of the way that real life photo lenses are shaped, particularly the more curved wide angle lenses, there's always going to be uh, some degree of lens distortion in real life camera footage. So let's say we have some footage from a real life camera which presumably features some degree of lens distortion. So if we look at this window's frame, for instance, obviously in real life, these lines are straight, but because light is refracting through our curved lens, we're seeing this sort of barrel distortion effect where uh, everything sort of bulges out near the center of the image. Now, if say we were trying to integrate CG elements from Redshift into this image, uh, let's say we wanted to add some drapes for our window, then we would need some way to recreate that same distortion in our Redshift render to match the distortion that's happening in our footage. Otherwise, our integration would look off. So if we disable our lens distortion shader here, and just render this out as is. Uh, obviously, we'll see that we get this really straight, non-distorted image. And if we overlay it on top of our original photo, we'll see that nothing really lines up. We're not getting the same curving along the top or the sides, and we're not getting that bulging effect in the center. So that's exactly what the Redshift lens distortion shader is for. Let's enable our shader one more time. And if we look at the attributes for it here, we see we really only have one main controller, which is this uh, distortion image uh, file input. So this is an image file that we would use to tell Redshift uh, exactly how to distort our image in order to match the lens distortion that is in our footage. And our distortion image would typically look something like this. We might recognize this as a UV map image which has a uh, black to red gradient running horizontally and a uh, black to green gradient running vertically. So now the question is how do we create this and how does it actually convey the lens distortion information uh, from our live action footage into Redshift. Well, these UV maps for lens distortion can actually be created from our live action footage uh, in programs like Nuke. And we won't go too deep into Nuke's lens distortion workflow here, but essentially Nuke has a lens distortion node uh, specifically for handling this effect in live action footage. So in Nuke, we would pipe our live action footage into a lens distortion node, uh, which has a few different tools to analyze the distortion effect. And then that node can actually bake that distortion information into a UV map image, which we can then output for use in Redshift. So if we plug that image into our lens distortion shader here, and we run another test render, uh, now Redshift will use those distortion parameters stored in our UV image to render our CEG elements with the exact distortion that we saw in our raw footage. So we can see a pretty significant difference between our two renders. And if we drop this onto our photo, now we can see that the distortion matches up pretty well. We're getting the same sort of bowing effect along the top and the sides, and sort of the same barrel-shaped bulging effect that we have in our photo. Okay, so that's the basic overview view of the lens distortion shader and that will wrap up our redshift camera basics for Maya tutorials. Of course all of these topics are covered in depth in the written documentation available online at redshift3d.com.